Welcome. In this lesson, we're going to start looking at some of the most recent properties that are supported within cascading style sheets. That's CSS3. And as we take this step, we'll note that the variant support across browsers is not uniform. In fact, the example that we're going to look at today, if you have an Internet Explorer browser that it's earlier than 9, it simply will not work. The same will be true from some of the very, very early versions of the browsers of others like Firefox or Opera or Chrome. But for the most part, we'll illustrate here what the variant support is, and we'll start off with a very simple example of CSS3. And this is multi-column support. Frequently, you'll want to do this. You'll want to spread your content for ease of the viewer or for viewing ease across several uh, ver several columns. And so this is something that uh, has been lacking for some time and that it's available within CSS3. So let's go ahead and write a page. We'll start off with a doc type here declaration. Uh, let me go ahead and do that again. And we will create a paragraph on the page. And within it I'm going to copy and paste some Latin text. We're then going to create a style. We'll do it directly within the page. We'll remove the type since we don't need it on HTML5. And we'll use the class notation. So we will call this one multi-column. And then we will add our properties. Now as I mentioned several browsers vary in support. They also vary in the property that they use to specify the support. So to get started with the WebKit browsers, and this is Safari within Mac, this is Chrome across platforms, and even Opera, I believe the latest one is of the WebKit line. So in this case, we do column count colon and then we want to have three columns. Now we need to specify the support for Firefox, the Mozilla line browsers. MOZ column count and three columns. Lastly we will specify the one for IE and we'll set that at three columns as well. So we'll go ahead and save that and now apply the class to the paragraph. Well, let's do it first without the multi column support. Let's go ahead and reload the page and you can see there that all that text shows up in one paragraph. If we add the class, let's go ahead and enter the name here, multi-column. Let's go ahead and reload the browser. And you can see there that now we have three columns side by side. Now, there's a lot more properties that are supported when it comes to using, when it comes to using multi-column. And we can see them here the number of columns that you have, the fill within the columns, gaps, rules, spans, and so on. I'll leave it up to you to verify the functionality of all of these, but let's go ahead and try one more. Let me go ahead and try rules, and I've written this here beforehand, so I'll go ahead and copy and paste onto the styles. In this case, I'm adding a pink rule to have a separator between each of our columns. And you can see here, once again, this is for the WebKit browsers. So I have a column rule, um, three pixel outset, and we have pink. This is the hexadecimal value for pink. We also have the support for Mozilla, and then finally for IE. So let's go ahead and save that, reload the page, and you can see there that now we have a separator for each of our columns. 
So multi-column is certainly something that's very useful that you'll want to use very often. But make sure that the audience that is using the application you are writing has, in fact, the right browser so that you do get the expected functionality. So with that, I'll go ahead and close and remind you to go ahead and try to replicate the example we just did. Make sure you can, in fact, get the, the columns as we see them here. And test out some of the older browsers, if you can, simply to see what happens if you don't have the support. So with that, I'll go ahead and close and say goodbye.